Hey, good morning, guys. Wanted to come to you today in kind of a continuation from the video, What Makes a Great Man. If you've not watched that video, please go back and watch that. Because the thought here is, how do we measure the greatness of a man? I'm going to say that again. How do we measure the greatness of a man? And I'm going to make this statement. I believe the true measure of a greatness of a man is how they treat women. Jesus is clearly our example. Jesus said the same way the Father sent me, so I send you. Jesus did more for raising up the treatment of women than arguably anybody in human history. The woman caught in adultery, the woman at the well, the prostitute washing his feet, the bride. What he did to pursue us, we're the bride of Christ. We are his wife. He set the tone. He loved us first. While we were sinners, while we were away from him, he pursued us. He loved us unconditionally. He was intentional. He placed himself inside Mary intentionally to come and to pursue us. Then you look at Adam. How did Adam treat women? When the crap hit the fan, what did he do? He blamed Eve and God. It was the woman. He didn't step in and protect Eve. Then let's look at David. Another one. We talked about this in the last video. David was a man after God's own heart. Why? I would argue the way he treated Bathsheba was amazing. When the crap hit the fan, he didn't take the road of, of Adam. He could have. Oh, man, you shouldn't have been laying naked on your roof. It's your fault that this happened. You tempted me. You. No, no. He didn't do that. When he was confronted by, he owned it. He then took her in because her husband was dead and loved her. The baby died. He could have kicked her to the curb. He could have kicked her to the curb. He did not do that. He loved her, took her in. They had another child, Solomon. And David so revered Bathsheba. In front of Solomon, read Proverbs 1, 2, and 3. How much Solomon revered his mom. Where did he learn that? David. So my question to you men, is your wife left longing? Is your wife lonely? Empty? Hungry? Jesus said, if we come to him, we will never hunger and thirst. We're to be his representative. Is your wife hungry and thirsty, men? We have to be intentional and pursue her. Pursue her. Not do another list. Not do a to-do list. It's so much more than tasks. It's a spiritual giving of yourself. Laying down your life for her needs. Pursuing, filling her up with your unconditional love regardless of her response. Jesus got on the cross for the sins of the world. So... I don't care what her response is. It's not about getting a response. That's giving to get. And the word's clear about what happens there. So men, are you giving your life as a ransom for your wife? Fill her up. Fill her up with love. Put her needs ahead of your own. Treat women, not just your wife. So even if you're not married, women, do you treat women with grace and elegance? Because guess what? The woman you're talking to is either A, if she's a believer, that's Jesus' wife. So I suggest you treat her with love, grace, kindness, care, honor. And if she's not a believer, she may be Jesus' wife one day. So either way, we've got to treat him with grace, dignity, honor, respect. Men, the greatest measuring stick for how we are as men, if we're great is how we treat and honor and value women. Have a great day, men. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like this video, men or women, women help me. I want to reach men. I want to have a mind shift. I want to shift the way men think about how they relate with women using Jesus as our model. Have a great day.